last time here on the channel, we finally pulled the VQ motor out of Valley's 350Z. After a long night, we headed over to Turbo Toys for a local OEM axle and a differential for the Q50. We needed some room in the shop if we wanted to swap the engine into the black 350Z efficiently. Looks like the Q has to come off the lift. All right, people, so it is the next morning. We finally got back to the shop. We're gonna have to fill up the Q50 differential, get the Q50 finally off the lift, being that it's been up here for a little over two weeks. Hopefully get this engine out of the black Z, get rid of this white Z, mock up this engine and put on everything it needs to be able to put back into the black Z. Like I said before guys, we have an OEM differential inside the Q50. This is just gonna be a grocery getter for the time being. Right now I've just become like this big old Z man working on like all Z's now. That's gonna be the goal for today is just getting all Z's working properly. My Z, Ali Z, and uh, try to figure out something with the white Z. So when you go to start it, it's just the fans? Hey, Chad, when I turn the Q50 off because I wanted to leave it in neutral, how do I turn it back on? Is it, can you get it back in park? You said yeah. Do you know when I held it for like 30 seconds and I left the car off, or to turn the car off? Hello? Hello? Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah. So you, it, it has to be in neutral or park to turn back on. You can't turn it back on in reverse. No, right it's, it's in park. Okay. Yeah. I press on the button. <coughs> and then there's this light on my dash that has a car with a little, like, key in the middle of it. I don't know if that means key lock or and whatever. And then your fans turn on. My fans turn on, and then I get this thing that says low, low oil pressure stop. Did I lock the car? No. Is it key lock? Is the car lock and unlock? Like, yeah. So lock it. Lock it? My fans are full blast. What do you mean, Daisy? How? Yeah, I'm hearing shit I didn't hear before. Yeah. Your headlights flash for a second. Oh. It's been sitting for a week. You guys are probably get some gas too. That's weird. Keep going. It's staying on longer now. What? Oh, okay. He has to put it right in the back. Put <coughs> it back into the correct map. There we go. Don't look in there, there's oil in there. Look at this. <laughs> there's dip fluid in there. 
this engine oil is just black. And so much for like checking if there's metal in it. I guess it doesn't matter. Gotta take I can predict the future, babe. We gotta take this one out of here. I just replaced these. Hardest job of my freaking life, but. Clarifying, you did not are... replace them on this car. Yeah, I didn't replace these because this car is new. You see, it's all the way, it's touching the subframe basically. Ooh. I mean, it's not that dark. It could be a lot darker. <laughs> I said I was gonna take it. You just wanted to hug it. transmission we don't have to raise the car back up and down since we're gonna be taking this off the lift to take the engine out so it's just a small 12 mil that's up here mm -hmm. and then this is where your actual shifter linkage connects to and that's what moves this thing around and we gotta unbolt like three or four bolts in there and then this thing won't be connected to the car anymore Look, I was doing it. Ow. I hit the lift. Watch yourself. It lingers. But I was doing it, and then I looked at the camera, and I went, I weak. But it wasn't even on what I was doing, so then I uh, brought it over here. I don't think I can get that out with my hand. I think I'm going to have to use this. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, go ahead. It's your crankshaft position sensor. Yep. So you just want the tip. Yep. And then you're going to use your hand, and you're going to pull it out. And wiggle, ta-da! Is it out? Yeah. Cool. All right, get that 10 mil. Yeah, pull that sensor out. It should just pop out. Boop! Just like that. That's a sensor. Ta-da! Dude, those things are pretty sick. Dude, these are sick. Or not All right, so. These are gonna go on the Red Z, probably, because no, I they are. they look, and I already have Hot Boy wide wheels, so I don't mind throwing the spacer on here, and I'll basically have like half a body kit on the car. I'll find a spoiler, you know, from somewhere. Maybe your car. You can have mine. I'll figure something out, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a picture so I can flex on Instagram. Yeah. What's really cool about Ali's car and what we expected to do to this one? I actually spent a lot of money on it on some aftermarket parts that we never ended up throwing into this car. So now that we got a perfectly good engine to throw into a perfectly good chassis, now all these aftermarket parts can go to use. We got a brand new air intake for her, we got brand new O2 sensors, we got brand new ignition coil packs, brand new fuel injectors, a silicone hose kit from Mishimoto, stainless steel brake lines from Z1. Brand new radiator, brand new fans, brand new spark plugs. I mean, the list just goes on. She did all this work cleaning up her intake manifold. We got her spacers. We got her all these gaskets. Come to figure out that this engine, we're actually going to take off all of Sean's ported manifolds. And we're going to put it on the engine that came out of here. Now we're going to take this lower plenum off because I believe both of those plenums are port matched. So it should run a lot better. So that engine that we have with everything on it uh, currently actually ran 293 on the dyno and for a DE that's actually really good. So we're hoping that we can get the same, the same amount of power out of the same application just with this engine. The only difference between this engine and that engine, this one has 40,000 miles on it. So we're just going to hopefully see if this engine's not tired and uh, yeah, hopefully it makes some decent power. Honestly, if this engine works out, her car might be a little bit cleaner than my 350Z, which is cool because if you guys watched my last video, it was kind of what I was complaining about. I was complaining about the fact that I don't think I'd ever be able to get her white Z as clean as my red 350Z with the amount of money I would have to put into it and the amount that I spent on the red Z, so.
How's that light look? Too much? How about now? No, no. no come over here. <laughs> okay, how about now? Good? Yeah, look at yourself. Alright, so press you. Yeah. Good, yeah, on the recording. record. All right, so look, we've took out your everything that we've needed to on the car while it was on the lift, which is engine harness, starter, alternator, drive shaft, the drain, the engine oil, the coolant, the transmission fluid, exhaust. and we've taken off but like half an exhaust. Is there anything else? We've noticed that the ball joints are shot and we noticed that the lower control arm bushings at least on the driver's side are completely shot. We're gonna replace those. And we noticed that the axle, the rear axle to the driver's side, the cup that goes to the differential is actually completely cut and there's absolutely no grease in there. So whenever we can, we're gonna try and replace that. But now it's time to take the front end off, right? There's nothing else that we need to get under there for besides taking out the transmission stuff, right? Correct. Let's do it. That hose has come off. That won't come off. <laughs> Pick it up, toss it over there. So we took two engines and two transmissions out of two cars. I'd say that's pretty successful. So we're gonna call it a night right here. I mean, obviously we've kind of gotten pretty far. So we're gonna put this on a tire for the time being. Once we take all the stuff off of it that we need for the engine back there. And then we should be able to do a swap after we check some of the fluids in that engine and uh, make sure everything's running good. So stay tuned to see what ends up happening with Ali's car. We're going to call it a night for now. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm Double R and I'm out. Peace.